Hey everyone, welcome back. I'm going to keep it pretty short today. Uh, today we're going to talk about if you just got a Ford Think, what you need to do to kind of do basic troubleshooting, um, hopefully to get it to run and drive. We're going to go through um, where to check your batteries, um, the positive and negative terminals for the main pack, as well as key switch and cluster common issues that should get you back on the road. So to start, here's the battery pack, and if we just take a look, um, this is going to be the diagram um, that you can find online, and how that correlates. These two spots, the red being positive, blue being ground, are where you need to hook up your meter, and you should see 72 volts there. From here, the next thing we want to check is the fuse panel, and on Gen 1 and Gen 2 carts, these are actually in different areas. On a Gen 1 cart, it's going to be right here on the center pillar where the seat belts seat, um, plug into. Um, however, on a Gen 2 cart, you're going to see them under directly under the driver's seat um, like this. Um, so um, they'll be right here. You'll see your three fuses and your master switch, which I'm pointing to right there. And on Gen 1, is kind of they'll be hidden over in this little corner when you pull up the seat. Um, and your batteries are in there. So um, that's going to be important. You're going to want to know where those are. And you can see right here, this third little um, spot is actually stripped out, and that's very common. It's, almost, it's also common for these to not be flush or for the fuse holders themselves to break. So it's really important to open these up, check the fuses themselves, and then also check behind and make sure the fuse holders are good. Um, and you'll want to come back to this after you do the next diagnostic steps uh, because if you're not getting power to the cluster or to your DC-DC converter, these fuses are going to probably be the culprit. To start out, a lot of times these little connectors on the back of the key switch um, get loose over time. Uh, this is plugged into the rear of the cluster. You can pull one of the cup holders out to get to this. Um, the key switch is a four position key switch. The black is 12 volts. The red is when the key is switched to the reverse position, which is to the left. If you're looking at the key, it's when the key is switched to the left. Um, then when the key is switched to the right, to the first position. So this is off. If it's switched to the first position, that is turf mode, which limits speed to 15 miles an hour. Next is drive. So we have um, 12 volts, reverse, turf, and drive. So to test this, we'll be in the key off position. You can put your meter into continuity mode. Put your first probe here and your second probe in reverse. That's what we'll test first. If you don't have skinny probes like this, that's fine. Find you a, a little piece of wire, you know, something like this that you can insert in there and then just use electrical tape and tape your normal probe to it. Um, or you can buy some probes like this off Amazon for like $10. So anyway, we're on our first position pin and the reverse pin. When you switch to reverse, you should hear it beep. And on this one, you don't because this key switch is actually broken. Um, so let's switch this out really quick for another key switch that I know does work. We're gonna do the same thing. So we're gonna go in the first and second positions. And this one, you should hear beep. Perfect, so we'll go back to off. Now let's move this probe here to we're still on the black probe but now we're going to the green so that's turf so we're going to turn the key one position this way and we hear it beep that's great let's do drive and you hear it beep so this key is good the switch is good so let's move to the next thing so the next thing you're going to want to check under your seat um, depending on what year your card is, you're going to see some fuses, which are the gray things you see over to the left. 
of the screen and you're gonna see your master switch, which is kind of to the right. If you have an older cart, this will actually be a little further in. It will be kind of towards that center pillar, um, more on the center um, post right down here, but you're gonna have to get it by accessing under the seat. Um, but there will be three fuses there. The only thing that the cluster um, needs to turn on is good fuses in those. It's actually that little one, um, that little one that you gotta put a screwdriver into and that the master switch is on and that your batteries are showing 72 volts or higher. So the next thing you're gonna do, if you reach back here, you can unplug your connectors. This is what the high voltage connector looks like. This is called the J7A connector. This is the J8 connector. This is the low voltage one. You can tell because one's an orange and one's not. On your J7A connector, the pins are from left to right if it's facing you. So this is a one over here, goes all the way to 10, 11, 12, 13, 14. We want to test that we have 72 volts on pin one and pin 14. So pin one is high, 72 volts, pin 14 is ground. Let me do that really quickly. And it is cold outside today. So you're seeing a little bit less than that on my cart right now, but um, that is plenty to turn the cluster on. So if you're seeing 72 volts right there, that's a really good sign. The next thing I'm gonna show you while I'm already out here, if you want to test your converter, pull the J8 pin, and we want pin 4 and pin 13. So this one, start counting on the left, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, wait, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13. So we want to test across pin 4 and pin 13. Pin 4 is ground, pin 13 should be positive voltage on the DC-DC converter. And you can see, this is the DC-DC converter should be on at all times. We're getting 13 volts. If you're seeing less than 10 volts or so, it's probably that your DC-DC converter, which is on this pillar right here, I have the cup holder open, it's right here. Uh, if you open the hood, you'll see it. It's a black box that's right there on the front. Um, and that's the DC-DC converter. If you're not seeing anything here, and um, you can then test voltage going into the DC-DC converter, but if you're not seeing anything at all, it's probably that one of these fuses down here is, uh, is bad. Um, same for the 72 volts. If you didn't see 72 volts on that first test, that first fuse is the small one. You gotta put a flathead screwdriver in there to turn it and get it out. That fuse or the fuse holder is probably cracked. Um, so if this works and you're getting 13 volts here and the next thing to do is actually test the relay to see if you can get 12 volts on you will always get brake lights and you'll always get a horn um those bypass the cluster but if you're not getting anything else turn signals or um your headlights or anything like that um i'll show you how to bypass that to manually check the 12 volt system take your multimeter move your red probe to amps and turn the meter to amps all that we're doing here we're creating a jumper and you can do this with a paper clip or anything else that you want we're going to use pin 4 the same as before and pin 12 and this is the low side of the relay that gives power to everything else so if we just put again i'm going to use the meter because i already have it out here um, but you can use a paper clip or anything you want to to jump these and you hear that click Let's see if i can put this here to show you what i'm doing 
we're jumpering these pins. And so as I pull it out, and you can kind of see the headlights flicker in the corner of the frame there. So when I have that in, we're jumping, we're manually controlling that relay, which is what the cluster typically does. You can see my headlight switches on and my headlights are now working. This is an aftermarket DC-DC converter, uh, but your original one will look something like this. And it will actually be sitting right here. It's riveted into this spot. And mine's gone bad, so I've replaced it. But I can show you. Another thing to test, if you're not getting 12 volts on that test above where you bridge pin four and 13, you can test here. This is the input to the DC-DC converter. This side is 72 volts positive and this is ground. So if you test this with your multimeter, you should see 72 volts here. You can then test this output side. This should be 12 volts and this is low side ground. And you should see 12, 13 volts coming out of here. And if you don't see 72 volts coming in, then you probably have a fuse problem under the seat, like I pointed out earlier. But if you do see 12 volts coming out here and the test that I just showed you where you manually activate the relay doesn't work, well, your relay, there's actually two. And I would advise you replace both. One is for the horn and the washers and one is for your headlights and other things. Uh, but one of these relays will be bad. And if you do the test I just did, you can actually feel which one should be activating if it's working because um, sometimes they're not labeled. Um, your other fuses are also down here. So uh, that should be, put this back because it's getting icy outside. That should be the first steps you attempt to get um, your 12 volt system and your 72 volt system going on your cart. If you're getting 72 volts here, and your cluster is not coming on, it's probably a cluster issue. You don't have to have 12 volts to get the cluster to come on. Um, these are cluster bypasses, which I sell on my site, fordthink.org. And I'll actually show you this really quickly. But if we just plug in the 72 volt side, which is what I'm doing now. So we have the 72 volt side plugged in. 12 volt side is not plugged in at all. And we're gonna plug in the key switch. And you can actually hear with the key on, you just heard the contact or below the seat close. That's a really good sign. That means that the motor controller is receiving a signal from this board up here. And uh, that's what you want. So as I switch the key, you can hear that. Now I'm in drive and the cart's moving. So um, a contactor click is really the main thing that you wanna hear. So that's good news. Um, and then of course, if you plug the low side in, how this bypass works is when you turn the key on, it also will close that relay that we manually did. Um, so this is a full bypass that gives you 12 volts and everything and includes turn signal lights as well. Um, so hopefully that helps some of you debug, um, your first issues with your cart. Um, hopefully that helps some of you. And if it does, feel free to like, and subscribe. If you need a way to bypass your cluster or you want something for debugging, um, these things are available for think.org. Thanks.